The Army Corps of Engineers will study how to handle the Cape's aging bridges. Barnstable Village will host its third Halloween stroll. And it's Fire Safety Month. We have tips to keep you safe. All of that on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Thursday, October 13th, 2016. I'm Sarah Mannell. The Army Corps of Engineers hopes a study will help determine the best course of action to deal with the Cape's aging bridges. Glenn Cannon, Technical Services Director for the Cape Cod Commission, talks about the year-long study. They, have, they now have a study underway because even though they do, they, they do view them as, as structurally sound, um, they acknowledge that, that more, every year there's more and more uh, maintenance work going into those bridges. So they have a study underway right now. It, it has about another year to go to determine the cost of the maintenance versus new bridges and which one is actually becoming uh, you know, more functionally sound for mm -hmm. them or, or which more financially responsible. So that study is underway. Once they make that determination, then they'll move into the next step of how they replace those bridges. So you know, th there's, there's good and there's bad to it. I think it, it makes the process a little bit slower, but I can tell you right now, you're talking about two bridges that are, that are just so outdated. Uh, a, a bridge to replace the bridges they have, right? You know, w w uh, either one, it would be twice the size of the bridge it is now. Right. You know, the lanes are substandard. There's no barrier in the middle to separate. You know, we all know that we've seen the head on crashes on the bridges. Yeah. Disasters. There's no shoulders on the bridges if somebody breaks down. We've all seen that. That plugs up traffic. There's, there's really no safe pedestrian or bicycle accommodation on either one of those bridges. You know, right. there's a, I can't say, a three foot sidewalk, you know, on one side of it. You not can feel protected. the bridges shake if yes, you have a walk can. over it. <laughs> you know, it really, right, it's just not appropriate. So, so again, you could spend a lot of money. Uh, you know, I, I could see $500 for each bridge. I mean, you're talking about a billion dollars. Right. That's a lot of money for the state to pick up by itself uh, when it could be a federal program, and, you know, and the federal government could step in and help us with that. Cannon says the Army Corps of Engineers will also consider building a new bridge to replace both the Sagamore and Bourne bridges. It is Fire Safety Week. Today we have a tip to keep you and your family safe. This is uh, Martin McNeely. I'm a fire prevention officer from the Centerville Osterville Marsons Mills Fire Department. And I want to talk to you briefly about smoke detector protection in residential houses. There's a couple very important topics that we should keep track of this time of year, especially for Fire Prevention Week. Um, smoke detectors should be replaced about every 10 years in a house. It's very important that they're replaced. Um, they do wear out like every other piece of electronic equipment. So if you have electric smoke detectors and you have them in the bedrooms and in the common areas, make sure they get replaced. If you're handy with wiring, you can do it yourself or you can hire an electrician to do it. And if you have battery operated smoke detectors, the same thing. They should be replaced every 10 years. We recommend that you replace them with photoelectric smoke detectors. They're less sensitive to cooking smoke and bathroom steam, so you have a little less false alarms than you do from the ionization type smoke detectors. Um, if, you, if you have an area of your house that's away from kitchens and from bathrooms, you can have both types of smoke detector protection, but it's extremely important that you have your smoke detectors replaced and that they're working. Uh, if you don't have a chance getting out, your family doesn't have a chance getting out of a house if you don't have the proper smoke detector protection and if they're not working. Thank you. Barnstable Village will host its third annual Halloween stroll. To find out more, we chat with marketing coordinator Heather Arasque. watching Barnesville this morning. Joining me now for our community profile is Heather Orasco. She is the marketing coordinator for the Barnesville Village Halloween Stroll. Very excited to chat with you about this event. It is the, the second year for the stroll. Yeah, it's the second year. It ended up being that um, a lot of social and community events are being taken out of the Barnesville school system. And the Halloween parade, it was a question of timing. So we're able to get it the first 15 minutes of school, but then the teachers weren't wanting it so 
they did end up canceling it. So we ended up having a conversation with Joe Berlandi of the Bartsville Village Associati Association, and he stepped up in a major way. I I'm telling you, he saved the day because the Bartsville Village put this parade on. We had everything that we needed. It had great attendance, and we're just super excited to have a community event that brings community together and every person who desires to be there. Well, and what's really cool, I think, too, is that uh, everyone was a little sad that a tradition was ending at Barnstable West Barnstable Elementary School. And so to sort of have the community step in and say, you know what, let's continue this, just really speaks volumes about, about the village and, and the people who live in the village. It does, and, and their main objective is just to bring people together and make them happy and this is just one more event that they have added to their repertoire of events that it's perfect for us. It's the perfect way to get everybody out there. And Barnstable Village has recently, uh, not too long ago, been designated as a cultural district. So very cool. They are doing lots of activities. I feel like this falls right in that cultural uh, event category. Tell me what we can expect for the Halloween stroll. Okay, it's going to actually take place from 3 to 6. Um, 3 to 4 is going to be more of a stroll area where kids can go trick-or-treating, people can say hello, that sort of thing. Um, at 4 o'clock, we're going to start to get the people congregated on the village green. We're going to get people congregated on the grass in front of the courtyard and um, the parade's going to start promptly at 415 and then it'll t pr probably take about 10 minutes. So from that time to 5 o'clock people can have another chance to stroll because the stores will have trick-or-treat items for the kids and there's also going to be this cute little find the witch, a, a sweet little witch to find in there kind of like where's Waldo on Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. But um, yeah, and then at 5 o'clock there's going to be a DJ dance party up at the bandstand. Awesome. So cool. You know, it is such a great area because there is that gr the, the bandstand and there is the green space. Uh, so many events have been held there. They have lots of concerts there over the summer. It just seems like a really cool, fun family thing to do. It's going to be on Saturday, October 29th. Now, what do we need to know? Uh, do, do people need, is there a fee to join in? No, there's absolutely no fee. Kids come dressed in their costumes. We're actually trying to coordinate a nice band to lead the parade. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be so adorable. I'm, I'm very excited. And there's also a rain date of October 30th if we end up running into a problem. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. That's always good to do because you never really can tell what the weather's going to do. So good to know there's a rain date Sunday, October 30th. Uh, same time then, it'd be 3 to 6 just on Sunday. 3 to Sunday 6, exactly. If there's a rain date. Are, are you dressing up? Have you decided? Are you going to dress up and wear a costume? My, my kids beg me every <laughs> single year, so maybe this year I'll surprise them. I'll get some crazy costume and embarrass them more than excite them. But um, yeah. <laughs> I love it too, and it's a great thing too, if a lot of kids maybe feel uncomfortable going trick-or-treating um, or maybe get scared of trick-or-treating, this is not a scary event, is it? This is just a fun oh, family event. Oh, this is just event. so cute. You know what? Everybody can go to the village stores and it's whatever, and, and, and might I just say that the stores in the village are so supportive as well. They come up with the candy to give the kids, they come up with little, ev with little events to do with them. It is just such a feel-good community event and uh, whatever we're so blessed to have a community that responds to their community like that. So. Yeah, it is. It is great. I mean, it almost reminds me of the 4th of July events that are yeah. held in all the different villages. So really cool to see Burnsville Village doing this. Do you hope this continues on every year? I know it will continue on every year and grow because it's just, it's, it's the, the community needed to get together more often. So I, I'm just grateful to Barnesville Village Association and, and I'm so excited to see the kids in their costumes. We're going to end up with some awards this year that are being hand designed by my daughter and um, whatever. It's oh, just what cute. Fun. Yeah. What fun. That yeah. sounds so great. Well, thank you so much for joining us and telling us everything we need to know about the Barnesville Village Halloween Stroll. Again, that is taking place Saturday, October 29th from 3 to 6 with the rain date on Sunday, October 30th. My guest this morning was marketing coordinator Heather Arasque for Barnstable this morning. I'm Sarah Mann. Well, be sure to tune in to our hour-long news program, Barnstable This Morning, weekdays at 8 a.m. On tomorrow's show, we will learn about an effort to raise money for a local elementary school playground. We'll meet some pets looking for forever homes. Plus, we'll have all the news and information you need. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.